Good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Tom welcoming you to another study in the Word. I would like to uh, apologize to you for not getting more of these on. Uh, I kind of got sidetracked the last few months and have been doing other things that were, you know, necessary and important. But now I want to get back to studying along some of these lines with you. This is our fourth session, I believe, in the making of a man of God. I wanted to read scripture to you in Romans chapter 8, if you'll turn over there with me, please. Because last time uh, that I spoke to you, uh, we were referring to uh, me learning to pray, and actually pray my wife uh, in to uh, the things of God. She was a Christian. She was a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, but... Uh, there was things that the enemy had uh, strongholds in her life and her mind that were holding her back. I think that's the case today in many people's lives. They have a misunderstanding of things. Sometimes uh, even, you know, uh, evil spirits that uh, cling to their thinking, I guess you could say their soulish realm, that uh, cause them to be cold to the things of God, lukewarm to the things of God, whatever. And I had to learn how to pray her out of that. And uh, one of the things that I like about the way God does things is he, he talks about seed time and harvest. He talks about reaping what we sow. And by me spending the necessary three or three years there or so, uh, really in travail type of prayer. You know, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, we travail in birth till Christ be formed within a person. The first time, and then again, uh, he, that's what he was talking about. He had, give, he had given birth uh, to them in the kingdom of God through prayer. Everybody that comes to the Lord Jesus, somebody prays for, believe me. <laughs> okay. Secondarily, uh, they... He, he was praying for them so that they would come into the fullness of, of, of the anointing of God, their calling, their gifts, uh, their identity in Christ and all that. And uh, uh, this only comes through people praying, and we need prayer people. And this is why I'm making out this particular series. Um, we need people. God needs you. I just, I just sense to say this to you. God needs you. If you're listening to this, please take this seriously. God's looking for people. The Spirit of God is moving across the world right now, looking for people that he can use to birth in the new thing that he wants to do in the United States of America and that he is already doing across parts of the planet. The thing about the uh, uh, Christians in America is, is that because most of them have never experienced a move of God, it's hard for them to understand when I talk about some of the things I, under, I, I talk about because they've never personally experienced them. Uh, church, even pastors, uh, even myself, if I was not uh, a person who uh, got to go overseas sometimes and see the way things are done over there and what's going on over there and hear about what's going on over there in some of these areas, uh, it would tend or it could tend to be very tedious because uh, we see um, what's, what happens so much in America that we don't understand that God can do so much more than what we're seeing. But it's only going to come through prayer, folks. There's no other way. We need people, I, I call them old-time thinkers, uh, people who believe that the power of prayer can change anything. And I learned this uh, early on. When praying for Stella, uh, the, the scripture in Romans chapter 8 was brought to my attention by God. And... Um, in verse 26, now I'm going to read out of the New King James Bible today. It says this, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. It's because he, he makes intercession for the saints according to uh, the will of God or God, as it, uh, it says here. And we know that all things work together for good of those who love God to those that are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestinated to become conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now these scriptures are very, very important 
and sometimes they've been taken out of context. People take one scripture and they say all things work together for the good of those who love God, and they miss the point here. What he's really talking about is prayer. See, I don't know everything to pray for. I know what the Word of God tells me to pray for, generally speaking. And the Word of God points out specifically God's will. Uh, it's God's will for people to be saved. It's God's will, we know from the Scriptures, for people to be healed. It's God's will, we know from the Scriptures, to people to be delivered from sin and, and habits and, and so on. It's God's will for a lot of things to take place. We know from the Scriptures. But God, uh, we don't know exactly how to uh, do what is prayed necessarily for whatever needs to take place in someone's life for God to get them from point A to point Z. And this is why God, uh, um, we don't even know that for ourselves. This is why God has given us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has been given to help us to pray. He's been given a spe specific task to help us and help us in our weaknesses. And we have a weakness in this area of not understanding exactly how God wants to get us from point A to point Z. I don't see a whole lot of, especially in, in good uh, word-oriented churches, I don't see a whole lot of people who are confused so much about God's specific will for healing and deliverance and all that. What I see, though, is I don't see uh, a whole lot of them obtaining these things. And I think the problem is, is because we have not understood that one of the things that has to happen is there has to go up this Holy Ghost prayer because we don't know how to pray for things as we ought. But it's the Holy Spirit who makes intercession or stands in the gap as we pray for us with groanings. And, of course, I've told you before, the word groanings here, that's, you know, really the best translation of that I ever heard is God talk. It's it's tongues. It's 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 groaning, yes, but it's also uh, non-articulate speech or praying in the spirit or what the Bible calls praying in other tongues. As you get enough people doing that, God is able to flow through them and begin to work in the lives and the hearts of His people. He begins to change circumstances. He begins to change the inside of us. He begins to birth within us moves of God. I remember back when I first learned that, God began to share with me, and then it came on Stella, my wife, that we were called first and foremost to give birth, if I can use that term, to things of God, to give birth to people into the kingdom of God, to give birth to moves of God, to give birth to the moving of the Holy Spirit, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, the outpourings of the Holy Spirit, the revivals of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that God's people can do this. God's people, praise God, are filled with him and his will and his purposes and his future. But they have to give birth to it. It has to be spoken. It has to be said. It has to be prayed for. It has to be words have to go forth. And we have to ask him. And we don't know how to sometimes. We can pray general prayers. Oh, God, please send revival. Oh, God, please help me to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, God, please manifest yourself in my church. But sometimes the way God, ha what God has to do to move circumstances to have that come to pass, we don't know how to pray for. But God does. And he has not left us without the Holy Spirit to begin to help us to pray these things in. Now, 35 years later, you're looking right now at a man who has been through a lot, seen a lot. I've been through moves of God. I've seen God heal people. I've seen people uh, of all types of situations delivered, dying. I've seen them healed. I've seen people that were crippled walk. I've seen blind eyes open, deaf ears open, you name it. I've seen it. If I haven't seen it, I know people who have. I've heard of it. Anything is possible to God. And we're coming into a time in America and in the American church for the next move of God. Every 40 years in America since it started, there has been a major outpouring of the Holy Spirit revival. Call it what you want. And I came in to the things of God in 1978 at the end of the last great outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's been some refreshings. There'll be times of refreshing within in each of those 40 years. 
but I'm talking a major outpouring of the Holy Spirit. This is America's history, and there's reasons for it. The number 40 is important in that, but I don't want to get into that. 35 years ago, I call it on April, uh, I call it my spiritual birthday, uh, Easter, because it was that week of Easter that I dedicated my heart to the Lord in, my, in the room with my Bible. God at that time, from that moment on, began to teach me personally, one-on-one, -on -one, the importance of prayer and how it was only going to be through this spirit prayer that we pray, this travailing prayer, both in tongues and in, the, in, 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 in our own natural you know, vocalization or our own words, but spirit anointed prayer, spirit prayer, prayer in the spirit. Ephesians chapter six calls it prayer in the spirit. It can be, it can be in tongues. It can be in, in, in your own under, under the anointing of the Holy spirit in your own language. The old time Pentecostal people years ago used to wait on God for hours. Uh, this is a lost art, but it's beginning to make a comeback in some circles. We see kids in Kansas City, in IHOP, the, the IHOP people, beginning to learn to wait on God. I believe that there's other groups across the nation that are starting to catch on to the importance of waiting on God. At that time in my life, I began to do a lot of waiting on God. I would pray sometimes three, four, five, six, seven hours a day. My wife began to do that. Here recently, my wife spent four and a half months away from me in Panama, Central America. Now, th this had happened two years in a row, two years in a row, four, year, four months away from my wife. During this time, God began to deal with both of us in different ways, but my wife began to pray. She prayed uh, as she was walking. She would go out for walks and she would walk seven hours I know that sounds funny to some of you, but she didn't. She lost a lot of weight doing it too, but she walked seven hours, or she, but she was praying an average of seven to ten hours a day in the Spirit. As she began to do this, why, we didn't know. God was just separating us into this new area. As she began to pray that way, I believe she began to move into the realm of the Spirit and she began to pray out the future of not only our ministry, but things that are happening in Panama, things that are happening in Pakistan right now for us, and things that are going to begin to happen in America. I believe that right now, God is telling me to get back to the basics of prayer and to put away so much other things that I've been doing and begin to pray again. I believe that God is calling some of you that are watching me to fast and pray and pray in the spirit for many hours, allowing God to not only work within you what needs to happen for your future, but also to work and, and flow through you to bring about his purposes and plans in the earth. We have very few churches that I know of today that even have corporate prayer meetings. And when they do meet, it's only for a while. And there's no, it cannot possibly be enough prayer go up in those corporate prayer meetings to do what God needs to do. So he needs individuals that will separate themselves off for the work and calling of God this way. I know it's difficult. We have a tendency to be busy. We have a tendency to to be so caught up in all of the affairs of life that we just can't seem to get the time to get quiet before God. But it was absolutely imperative for me at that time to be able to pray that way so that my wife, you see, the only way people are changed really is by the power of the Holy Ghost coming and dealing with them. We have went away from that so far in the church. I plead with you and beg with you Please, we need to get back to that. People go to counseling to get help. They go to psychiatrists to get help and psychologists to get help. And I'm not putting any of that down. They go through Bible studies that cater to going back and, and having to, you know, see what's wrong with me and, you know, you understand why with, when this happened to me, this caused this. And I have no problem. I, I don't, I, I'm not against any of that. What I'm trying to say is, is that what should be happening 
is those things that on the inside of us need to be healed and need to be delivered can be delivered and healed as we pray and we seek God as we're giving expression to it in the spirit God will then on the inside of us and touch and heal and deliver and bring touch and touch and heal and deliver other people supernaturally it should not take 10 years if we had a move of God like God wanted us to around the altars of God the way it used to be in the church many, many years ago in the early Pentecostal days and Zeusa Street Revival and places like that, God can touch people and change their life in a very, very short amount of time. The problem is, is the ch church is pulled away for the most part from the Spirit and from the Word and has gotten over here and, and initiated the things of the world that solve problems that way into its Christianity. We need to get back to what God says we need to do. So as an example, when Stella was praying for uh, many, many hours, I had no idea what God was going to do in Pakistan, that God was going to pick a a, a little a fellow there, a little family there to take our video, simple video, and begin to show it in in these projector shows. And the next thing we know, over f closing in now on fifteen thousand people have been born again through these projector shows in in a year and three months. Now that's unheard of in Pakistan, but it's happening. And by the way, if you see anything against us, because there's people out there they call themselves Christians that are trying to um, destroy our ministry there not the Muslims uh, it's it's religious people it's Christians that are jealous and for one reason don't believe in what we're doing there I don't believe them there's such a move of God and such an impact of the Spirit of God that Satan is really really trying to stop what's going on of course he can't do it it's such a sovereign and powerful move of God well that's going to continue that started it's like a fire that's that's being breathed on this 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 nation of Pakistan but I believe that can happen in America. It's happened in Africa. It's happening in Central America. It's happening all over the world. I've got to tell you, it's happening in Central America in such a way that, that the Catholic Church has elected a pope right now from Latin America. And the reason that that happened wasn't because they were seeking the will of God. The reason they did that, one of the reasons was because they're losing people in that, in that particular area so fast. They're not telling you that, but I'm telling you, they're coming out of the Catholic Church like you would not believe into Pentecostal churches, getting filled with the Holy Ghost by the thousands, not the hundreds, the thousands, literally almost weekly now. Uh, if you go down there into, a, into, into some of the churches in, in, in Central America, I'm using them as an example because I've been there and seen it. What's happening is at an altar call, 30, 40, 50 people are being born again. In every altar call given for every church service, and there may be multiplied church services in the bigger churches. Simply a harvest is being reaped. But it started by people catching what I'm saying, catching a simple sermon. What I, like I'm saying, like like Pastor Cho did in Seoul, Korea, where literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people begin to pray and just wait on God and begin to pray in the Spirit. They did it long enough. They did it for years, not weeks, not months, but for years. And there has been people in America that have been doing this now for years, but we need more. We need, we need people that are not just known you know, people that that are that are uh, preachers on the forefront. We need people behind the scenes that nobody nobody's ever going to see you. You're not going to get your name in light, so to speak. You're not going to be the one that people are going to go, ooh, ooh, aren't they doing a fantastic thing for God? No, no, no. You're going to be one that's going to be in the background and not care about that. But just spend time with God, spend time in the presence of God, spend time praying and crying out to God, spend time separated unto God. I remember um, stories about little Pentecostal women that God used to birth a uh, Pentecostal church and Pentecost across America and around the world. Now it's touched all, the entire world and headed towards 70% of all Christians are now spirit filled. And I'm talking about talking in tongue Christians over, headed towards 70%. The greatest move of God that's ever came on this earth, don't let anybody ever tell you different, 
came through the, is coming through the Pentecostal type of churches, word-oriented churches, word of faith churches, and that message of faith. It is literally storming around the world right now. Actually, it is very, very, very uh, limited, unfortunately, in America. But around the world, it's not. It is, it, is, it is hitting those countries, and it needs to hit America. We need a fresh move of God. We need a new move of God. We need a transforming presence of the Holy Spirit that begins to manifest in all the ways the Holy Spirit wants to manifest. God wants to touch us. God wants to minister to us. God wants to manifest himself to us. God wants to touch people's hearts and lives. He wants to bring back repentance. He wants to call home the prodigals. He wants to people people that are lukewarm to be on fire. He wants to, to initiate radical fire within the churches of America and around the world. He wants now there to be a new fresh fire that begins to come from one end of America to the other end of America. And we're ready for that next move of God within the next five years. It could be sooner than that. You see, I came into that move of God that I'm talking about, about in 1978, which was at the end of really what God was doing in that major move of God. And it started to wane at that particular time a little bit. We came into a really new, fresh, uh, uh, refreshing in 1990s. And uh, there's been some between, in between, but, but not that major move of God. From now until five years from now, somewhere within that, that, that scope of time, we are going to begin to experience an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. I know what it looks like in America. I know what the political scene looks like in America. But you see, you can expect this because people now are getting very serious. They see what's happening in America. They're getting on their knees. I believe even in California and places like that, we're going to see such a mighty move of God. In fact, I was in California here not too long ago. I saw one of the greatest things I've ever seen. I've been Listen, I've been doing this for 35 years. I've experienced a lot in my life. I've seen God do all kinds of things. Me and my wife are known for people that God uses in uh, you know, the gifts of the Spirit and moves of God. Uh, anything is liable to happen in one of our services, and that's not an understatement. I mean, seriously, you never know what's going to happen when we when we go out and we have uh, meetings in churches. It can be different. It can be wild. It can be intense. It can be powerful. But I've never seen anything like what I saw here recently when the, the Spirit of God had me pull little children out, little children from about five years old to a teenage age, about 16. And he would have me come up, and I was under a, a, an anointing of the Holy Spirit. It was a miracle type of anointing that comes on us sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes in in these meetings. And I, and I call them up, and the Lord had me blow on them, or I just laid my hands on them, and they would fall under the power. And that same anointing, that was on me would be transferred to them, but in a greater dimension than was on me. And these little children began to pray for people. And I saw God move through the little children. And I saw grown men and women, the power of God hit them and knocked them on the ground. I saw them shaking. I saw them crying. I saw them weeping. I saw them laughing. I saw them repenting. I saw God heal them. I saw demons come out and scream as they left people all over the building and as these little children began to pray for people. I saw, and we, we, we all saw it, we saw something so powerful. It had it, what, what was so great about it was those little children. It had to be God. It could not have been orchestrated by any man. And it was so awesome and so powerful that we saw what God is capable of doing, even with little children. And somebody says, well, I've seen that. I, I don't know, folks. Maybe we, some of you have seen some of that. But this was something that I wish every Christian could have seen because it was so life-changing for me. It was so, um, it was, it was, it was so uh, holy. It was so awe-inspiring. There was not one person that would have, could have been there where I was standing and could have been around that 
where they they could have would have left that that meeting and their life wouldn't have not been radically changed and by that i mean i left that place pondering this in my heart pondering what god could do if god could do what he could he did in that service and begin to do that in every service in every church that's open across america it would not be long until america would be on fire for god and revival would begin to be sparked in such a way that it would change our nation in just a few years. This is really what I believe is going to begin to happen. Now, I'm not saying God's just going to use little children, but He the presence of God, the anointing of God, the, the, the touch of God, this is what me and my wife, and others like you have been praying for, for for a long time now, 35 years I've been praying for this. Now I've seen it, I've seen touches, I've seen God come into buildings, I've, I've, I've seen him do things. It's like a carrot, he keeps putting a carrot out in front of me every once in a while. I'll see something so, such a service, so dramatic and so powerful like that. And I know what God can do. And let me, let me leave you with this thought. In 1978 when God called me to the ministry, for three and a half days, I was caught up in the spirit and uh, saw visions of the future ministry. And then for 30 days after that, the glory cloud manifested in my home. And by that, I literally, tangibly at times could see it, still, still do today, could still see the glory of God. But during that 30 days, when God was visiting me, and it was such a powerful time, I cannot describe it to you. The only thing I can say is in that glory, Healing's easy to receive. Miracles are easy to receive. Jesus is easy, easy to receive. Repentance comes. A touch of God comes. There's something about that that's so strong. When you get in the presence of God, that's strong. That nothing is impossible. When you get touched like that, when you get touched like that, when you're in that kind of glory, It breaks through the hardness of even the hardest heart. It brings healing, spirit, soul, and body. You can never be the same. You can never be the same. It was like Jesus on the mountain of transfiguration with those three disciples. I came out of that experience forever changed. Recently, God revealed to me that he gave me that experience to begin to talk to people and tell them the churches that are hungry and the people that are hungry are going to begin to have that type of move of God come into their churches in this last great move of God. But we have to pray it in. It has to be prayed in. The transforming presence of God has to be prayed in. I'm asking, I'm pleading with you that are watching. Share this with somebody. I know it's a simple message today, but there's an anointing on it. Share this today. Because the little tangible anointing of God for prayer is going to come upon people that watch this. Let me pray for you right now. Father, I sense your glory and your presence all over me. I sense the glory of God in my room right now. I sense it right on this video. I'm asking you to impart a spirit of travail and prayer. If people have never prayed in tongues before, begin, Lord God, right now to come on them and just have them open their mouth and begin to pray in the Spirit. I birth, I pray right now, Lord, that you birth prayer ministry all over through this particular video. A new dimension of prayer. A, do, a new dimension of desire and hunger for God. Come on you. A spirit of prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let God pray through us the next major move of God and let it be done now. In Jesus' name, God bless you.